I'm Dave McComiskey, Executive Director of CBM Canada. There's been terrible flooding in Southeast Asia, the worst in 25 years. Ravaging floods have destroyed millions of homes, crops, and livestock. People with disabilities are the first to die and the last to receive relief. CBM is there, responding to the critical needs of those with disabilities. You can help us save a life today. Contact cbmicanada.org. That's cbmicanada.org. Hey everyone, this is Lil J. Join me every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern for The Block Party. A two-hour journey of the best in the Canadian underground dance music scene. Featuring tracks and DJ mixes from Canada's emerging artists. From the disco hits of the 70s to the latest dance floor fillers. No lineups or cover charges. It's your weekly free access to the beats that are packing dance floors in Canada and around the world. The Block Party, Saturday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on 102.9 Whistle FM. And we're back on Fresh Waves. We're talking with Joanne George about Smiley and Sunny and Mm. therapy dogs. And uh, Joanne, tell me a little bit about what goes into creating a therapy dog. Um, I, I truly think a therapy dog is something that the qualities that we look for, a dog is either born with it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, not all dogs have it in them to be a therapy dog. People are the same. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) They, a therapy dog has to want attention from complete strangers, you know, and go right to a stranger and look for attention from them. Most dogs, you know, tend to stick closer to the owners. Um, so, we need a really calm disposition, um, you know, and just a dog that really shows interest in others without being overpowering, like no pawing, no jumping, no barking, no mouthing. You know, they just want to have to stand there and take attention. They have to be truly bomb-proof. Um, you know, so... What do you mean by bomb-proof? Like they that just... nothing affects them, nothing spooks them, nothing scares them. You know, um, we visited for many years at Participation House. You know, their hand movements aren't quite as smooth, say the residents there. You know what I mean? They might not have a nice smooth pat the way most dogs are, you know, used to being patted. It might be more, you know, you know, and a therapy dog has to see that as... Okay. okay and good and kids squeal and you know special needs classes you know they're louder maybe and you know just oh they have to be prepared for anything mm-hmm. you know and noises and you know so we you know i've seen a lot of owners come in for an evaluation with their dog they want to have their dog a therapy dog but, you know, they're quite disappointed to learn after the evaluation that their dog doesn't want to do it as much as they want to. And they're pretty <laughs> sad. But, you know, like I said, you know, we're there to cheer these people up. And if the dog, you know, that goes in there doesn't do that, it actually can make the, res- you know, the people we're visiting sadder. right? Mm. So, or, or more frightened. They yeah, have to have a safe environment. That's right. A lot of kids have phobias um, these days with dogs. Not everybody, not all families have dogs, and they're actually, you know, nervous. So we need dogs that, you know, can also pull kids out of those phobias. And so mm-hmm. Smiley was so great that way, you know. Yes. He, he was so good for uh, kids in that way. I, I once met a child who was so frightened of dogs that she tried to get underneath a couch to get away from a dog that was a standard poodle named Rosinanti. Mm-hmm. And Rosie was a beautiful dog mm-hmm. and so well-tempered. And I was saying to this little girl, who was about five or six, it's okay, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Rosie's really gentle and she's not going to hurt you. And every muscle in her body was tense. Yeah. Her whole body was shaking. Her face was stark white and her eyes were huge. She mm, was so yeah. frightened. And it's an un unjustified fear because she'd never had an encounter with a dog. She was just afraid of them. And there was only three inch clearance on this couch. And she she was was trying to get under under that couch. And later in the evening, um, 
you know, we removed the dog from the room and let mm-hmm. her get comfortable again. But the dog was just roaming around the house. Later that evening, we couldn't find her and we couldn't find Rosie. And we found them in the basement mm-hmm. curled up together. And she Aww. was asleep with her head on Rosie's tummy. And they were curled up together wow. sleeping on the floor. And that just told me more about that dog mm-hmm. than standard, anything else. Could. Standard poodles are very commonly used as service dogs and therapy dogs. They're so smart. Yeah, they're very smart. People and very intuitive. Don't uh, look at him. He's just absolutely sleeping <laughs> on the microphone. Here. <laughs> oh, somebody has take to a take a picture there. I was going to say somebody has to take a picture of that because he's sleeping on the microphone and he really oh, is just the cutest cry. thing. So, okay, so I know that. Some dogs take a couple of times before they end up passing their test to become a service dog. Oh, so, um, is is it sometimes a question of maturity the way it often is yeah. with human beings? Well, yeah, sometimes actually, you have to grow up a little bit. That's right. It's it's not typically a a job for a one and two year old. You know what I mean? When they're one and teenager dogs, aren't they? Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah not a teenagers typically. There's been some dogs that have passed with flying colors at one and two. Those are the dogs that are truly you know born for this. Um, but typically, you know, the older dogs, you know, do best because they're quieter and they, they're not jumping and they're not making noise. Out. That's right. <laughs> you know, so, uh, I would say it's a great job for a retired dog, you know, so, but like I said, you know, it can, uh, any dog can do it. They just have to, you know, have the right qualities that, you know, St. John's is looking for in other therapy programs. Okay, we were now, with St. John Ambulance. Now, these aren't the same. There's different kinds of therapy dogs, aren't there? Um, therapy dogs provide therapy to others. What people get confused with is service dogs. Right. Where a service dog provides a specific service to one individual, and you, the handler or the owner. Um, so, like a seeing eye dog, which is most commonly known. But then there's so many service dogs now. There's autism service dogs. There's seizure um, dogs, there's, you know, just emotional support dogs. Um, there's, it, it's endless now that they're finding ways for dogs to help society, you know, even as therapy dogs, people typically just think of going into, uh, nursing homes and visiting residents and seniors, residents and Alzheimer's patients. Then, you know, it, it went into, you know, um, classrooms and such and helping kids but high school students going through exams university students going through exams now they're in courts um sitting beside you know a young child or or an adult that has to testify that's very stressful to them so the dog sits beside them and you know calms them um you know there's you know a lot of places with then you know now like there's therapy dogs in saskatchewan you know going into the schools and helping those kids that are going to school, dealing with, you know, their feelings and the stress. So there's a perfect example, you know. Mm-hmm. There was teams sent out there right away to help people. Yeah. I remember in Fort McMurray even. Yeah. After the fires. Yeah. When people had lost, not loved ones, but their homes mm-hmm. and their space, and their mm-hmm. space didn't feel safe mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. And they sent the therapy dogs yep. in, and the results that they have with those dogs yeah. was unbelievable. Because there's no talking, there's no judging, there's no no questions yeah, to be suck answered. It up, it's only stuff. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> you know, and you know, it seems different being comforted by a dog. Because again, there's the no judgment, and it's just quiet, peaceful, and there's an know. intuition there. Yeah. There's a, there's an yeah. energy and an intuition that you can't describe. A true therapy dog knows who needs them. And, you know, dogs, you know, sense our energy and our feelings very easily. Um, and so they, they know who's stressed. That's why they have these emotional support animals. You know, they've yeah. proven that, you know, they know when somebody's going through, you know, stress and then the dog steps in to try to calm them. Well, we had the, the so. news on and we were watching the vigil on mm-hmm. on Sunday mm-hmm. for Humboldt and um when I was crying my dog was right there Phoebe yeah. she's a golden doodle who's black and no one wanted her yeah. because everyone wants a golden Gold, golden gold, doodle yeah. and they don't want a black golden doodle <laughs> and she's the sweetest dog on earth but the second someone in the family's upset she's yeah. right there yeah. she senses it she That's knows right. it she didn't hear it yeah. mm-hmm. she can just sense it and she's there in a heartbeat how old is she She's 13. She's going to be 13 in May. 
Maybe but she's, she's a therapy dog. Oh, she's kids. a therapy for our family. Yeah, no, exactly. I've got four kids. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we all need therapy in our own ways. <laughs> you know, what certifiably I insane who have I four kids in six years. <laughs> I always say, you know what? I think all of our dogs are therapy dogs because they are. They're providing therapy when we come home from work, and they're when we're sad or mad. Yeah. You know. You, they and my daughter had down. a cat that would know when she was not feeling well. And it would come and lie on her stomach yeah. if she had a stomach ache and knead her yeah, stomach yeah. with its paws. I've and if she had a, a headache, lot. it would be up by her head doing the same wow. thing. This cat was was yeah. so intuitive. Well, they're sniffing out cancer. They're, yeah. The dogs, they're... It's amazing what... It is their, amazing. The powers of dogs that we're still just delving into now. Yeah, and beginning to understand. Mm-hmm. Well... I can't say enough for Smiley and what he did for this community mm-hmm. and for little Sonny now just looking at him. He's just <laughs> the cutest thing. And you know he's wearing a bow tie in honor of being at Whistle yes. FM. <laughs> this is his first Whistle FM debut, yes. and we hope to have him yes. on a lot in the yeah. future to come and oh. talk to us. And Maybe we shouldn't have played so hard this morning. We're very tired. Last you see a little smile. Oh, but that's good. He it's okay if he's tired. Smile. <laughs> he? He's got a beautiful smile. He does. He's just so sleepy. But that's a baby thing, too. Yeah. So yeah. will he be a therapy dog in the near future, or are you going to let I don't him... know. You know what? He's only four months yeah. old, so, you know, we will... just a baby. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's showing the, the great uh, signs of a therapy dog, but we will see. But no matter what, you know... He doesn't need any certification to be giving therapy on social media, which he is already doing. Right. You know, people are really embracing, you know, him as, as Smiley's legacy and carrying on for Smiley and, you know, just keeping people smiling. You know, I want to continue that just positive social media, you know, so. Yeah, none of this political nonsense yeah. that seems to be taking over our town at the we current are, time. We are staying out of that, right, Sunny? Stay right out of all That's of that right. stuff and just constantly we reminding just keep people. Keep our mouth that- closed and look cute. Right? Yeah. That's all we gotta do. Yeah. And then you can learn ventriloquism too. That's right. <laughs> so if I have something to say, I can say it through Sunny. Say it through the dog or the horse. Yeah. Now horses have a unique therapy quality as well. I've heard of many people who use horses with, um, kids with autism mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's a, Horses, Again, horses yeah, seem so huge. Yeah, to me, a horse is yeah, not cuddly. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay, I've seen pictures of you cuddling your horse, but yeah. you know, by and large, yeah. you're not going to invite them in to watch TV with you. But they are so sensitive to it. They're a, you know, a, a prey animal, and they're very v- extra sensitive to our feelings and what's going on in energy. So to get with a horse and get close to a horse and connect with a horse, you have to be very, very calm. And in your own self. Yes. it. You just have to let everything go. If you have an ounce of stress in you or an ounce of anxiety or any kind of hyperness or just anything, the, you're not going to connect with the horse because they are tip, they're like a deer. You know, they're no different than a deer, a domesticated deer. They, if they fear something, they're going to run. Um, you know, so... They're not going to connect with you unless you have left everything behind. So it really, a horse truly teaches you to just come in with a very calm way about you and just, you have, you, you force yourself to let it all go when you go to your horse. And so kids, you know, they take a lot of, there's a lot of programs for troubled teens. There's a lot of programs with, um, especially in the United States, um, inmates, like prison inmates. Maybe who are with horses? Yeah, they wow. uh, they take them to different uh, ranches and they connect. They pair them up with a horse, and it helps with anger issues and um, because they want to work with the horse, but they have to be very calm. And you teach yourself to calm yourself. Where some people lose that, you know, once they've. Mm-hmm. This so, is yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Well, we've come to the top of the hour. It's time to take our break. And when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Joanne. We'll talk a little bit about dog training and about buying that cute little puppy that you might see this (laughs) This spring. spring. (laughs) Okay, you're listening to Fresh Waves on Whistle FM. I'm your host, Brenda Masson, and we'll be back. (music) 
And we are back on Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Bren Masson, and we're talking with Joanne George about Pape. <laughs> okay, we're talking about specifically this little guy who's joined us in the studio this morning, Sonny the Puppy. But puppies in general now, let's switch to puppies in general. This is the spring. Mm-hmm. People get all excited. They can go outside. They can play. Let's get a puppy. Let's get a puppy. We yeah. need a dog. Mom, yeah. mom, can we yeah. have a puppy? Please. Oh, please. Oh, you're the meanest mom if you don't let me have a puppy. And so you give in to the mean mom thing and adopt something from the Halliburton Feed Company. Ah. That's my own story. <laughs> I was going to say, so that sounds personal. Oh, yeah. yeah. The most That's... expensive free dog we've ever owned in our lives. Love her to death, but boy, oh, boy. Um, yeah, they're a lot of work. They are. Puppies are mm-hmm. not. Uh, they're very cute. Mm-hmm. They are loving. They lick your nose. You fall in love. They mm-hmm. whimper, and you just, oh, you but just But then wanna... there's also, you know, you're up three times in the night taking them out. They're crying. They're chewing things. They're, you know, there's They're being training. puppies. Yeah, exactly. But people puppies People Dude. don't realize that they meet, you know, they would meet smiley and go, we want a dog. That's what we want. But and just like it takes him. a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to get a dog, you know, to what, you know, you saw with smiley or, you know, your neighbor's wonderfully, wonderfully trained dog. They went through a long time to get the dog to that point. So, you know, me all of a sudden having this new puppy, I'm, you know, remembering now how much work they are they they are they're up in the night um you know I'm cleaning and even though you're on top of it say getting them outside for pee you know 20 times a day there's still accidents so you're still cleaning the rug and you're still spot cleaning everything and you know I've already lost a couple pairs of shoes and I'm supposed to know what I'm doing but I still you know <laughs> you know you get a little lenient and next thing you know you leave your shoes there and they're chewed out you know so you know, people really get into this and uh, not realize how much work a puppy is. You know, for a family that both parents work and the kids are in school, it's next to impossible. You know, a puppy cannot stay in a crate for eight hours a day. You know, even just somebody popping in at lunchtime to let him out for pee, that's, that's, not, a, that's not enough. Um, you know, a lot of people do then choose to get a puppy in the summer when the kids are off school. Um, which is, you know, great and wonderful until September comes back around and now all of a sudden the puppy's in for a real shock when everybody is gone for eight hours. Um, actually, when I went to Oregon to pick up Sonny, uh, he had a, a brother and a sister also in the litter um, who were, you know, perfectly uh, sighted. Um, they weren't blind like he is. Um, and anyway, he was adopted on the same day and just... The past few days, he was returned back to the rescue because, and I asked them, I said, why was he returned? And they just said, they said they weren't ready for a puppy. You know, obviously this family adopted him and then realized, you know, what kind of work it was. You know, puppies need a, a lot of exercise to tire them out. They, you know, there's costs involved. There's oh, yeah. a lot of vet visits. There's, I have two dogs. Know, yeah. My spring vet visit, visit every year. Blows me away how much money it yeah. costs. It's There's unbelievable. All the preventions now, you know, now we've got ticks and we've got fleas and we've got heartworm and we've got, you know, Lyme disease. All, you know, there's just so many things. Yeah, that to have a healthy dog, it, it does. It costs a lot. There's a lot of veterinary care for them and, uh, veterinary care isn't cheap. Um, so obviously this family was in over their head and returned him, which is sad. I, you know, I'd rather see a puppy returned than them keep it and they can't take proper care of it. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work involved. And so, you know, unless somebody works from home, you know, I find it pretty tough. Or, you know, what you need to do is you go and there's a lot of rescue organizations, um, around Toronto, uh, that specifically have older dogs looking for homes. You know, there's a real need for adopting an older dog, you know, or I'm not even talking senior, just an adult dog. They've already gone through the puppy phase. You know, they're okay to maybe hang out for, you know, most of the day and go for a walk in the morning, walk at night. Um, So that's something that should definitely be considered. And and I will, obviously, we're um, big advocates for adopting, not shopping. 
Um, you know, adopting, not shopping. That's right. You don't need There's to go and a shop. Distinction. Yeah, adopt, don't shop. There's that. It's a big hashtag and slogan that, you know, look to adopt a dog from a rescue versus a purebred, you know, puppy. Unless you're going to show, or you know, you really. There's not many reasons why I'd say you need a purebred dog. You know, right? You know, so. Always look to rescue a dog or adopt a dog. Um, a lot of these dogs are in foster homes now versus in shelters. So when they're at a foster home, we're able to learn what kind of home he needs. If he's good with cats, if he's good with children, is he terrible on the leash? Is he a little bit aggressive with other dogs? You know what I mean? They've, they've, somebody, a family has spent time with this dog. And they know about him now. When right. when you do go to some of these shelters and you're walking along the hallways of, you know, cages, there's, they can't tell you a lot about the dog. And I understand the hesitation there. But uh, there's a lot of private rescue organizations. Um, one in uh, Toronto that uh, we help out a lot is um, Redemption Paws. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they bring a lot of dogs in from the States that are in high-kill shelters, dogs that are about to, you know have their day and time has run out so they bring them here we don't have the the same issues that they do in the united states with unwanted dogs and stray dogs you know we don't have we don't have dogs roaming neighborhoods if somebody you know i love seeing on facebook if there's a dog out on the road somewhere loose my goodness there's like you know a full you know rescue organization out there of you know community members to get this dog you know what i mean like yep there's no dogs we, we don't have dogs roaming the streets and like they do in the states you know so uh you know a lot of people wonder about getting dogs from the united states when we have dogs here that need homes they're in a lot more serious risk of you know certain death in the united states than the, the dogs are here you know so we have pretty good adoption policies too with a lot yeah. of the rescue places if they're getting overcrowded instead of putting them down they'll they'll put out foster the word out. to foster yeah. them out and then out they go you yeah. know so we're pretty fortunate here our dogs are pretty fortunate um most of them are in safe places yeah. awaiting homes you know not at risk so yeah, yeah. that's nice to know yeah. it really is so you were talking about getting a puppy and you know getting one from a rescue mm -hmm. is a good idea and a lot of rescue organizations the reason that they're there is because people don't do their homework first mm -hmm. when you're going mm -hmm. out even if you are going shopping for a dog mm -hmm. start your shopping by finding out about the breed yeah, oh, that absolutely. would best suit your mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. if you live in an 800 square foot apartment don't get a great dane <laughs> chances are it's not going to be a good dog for yeah, you yeah similarly a german shepherd may be the dog you've always wanted but if you don't have the space mm -hmm. and the ability to have a dog of that size mm -hmm. or you don't like brushing dogs and i don't mm -hmm. like dog hair a german yeah, shepherd may not be the dog right. for you <laughs> yeah there's a lot of things to consider before you even start to look for a dog you know there's a lot of sites online, so you're just scrolling through adorable pictures and, you know, that shouldn't be making your decision is just a, a cute picture, you know? Yeah. So uh, there's a lot more to consider. And, you know, yes, when you're getting a mixed breed, you know, you might not know exactly what it's going to be, but, you know, ask for help. Um, people who are, you know, knowledgeable about dogs and breeds, usually you can decipher what two or three breeds are in a dog just by looking at, at the them. dog yeah. yeah exactly and then we and if they look like a dog chances are they take after those traits of that breed you know what i mean right. if i think it looks like a border collie crossed you know with a retriever i'm going to give you those you know behavior traits and most likely yeah. you know they're going to be pretty accurate we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get back from our, our little break here. You're listening to Fresh Waves on Whistle FM. We have Joanne George in the studio this morning. We're talking puppies. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
brittle bone disease, a birth defect, caused Lee's fragile bones to break even at the slightest touch. Then her family heard about Shriners Hospitals for Children, which provide pediatric specialty care for orthopedic conditions, burns, spinal cord injuries, and more. The world-class medical care that Lee receives at Shriners will enable her to live a fuller and more active life. Call 1-800-361-7256 for more information. Shriners Hospitals, helping kids defy the odds. Hey, I'm whistling. Would you like to whistle too? Whistle FM is looking for a few good volunteers. Come and join our team and learn a new skill. We're looking for producers, show hosts, and even people to help out around the station. Learn something new and meet new people. Email us at admin at whistleradio.com or drop by the station behind Stoville Fine Furniture. We hope to see you soon. Here we are. We are back on Fresh Waves. We're talking with Joanne George about dogs and breeding and um, the right dog for your lifestyle. Because in so much as it's fun to watch the dog whisperer and think that any dog can be made for you, just as long as you speak with it properly and relate to it somehow, that's not necessarily the case. And it doesn't mean that because you have never had a dog before that you should have something small. It it just means that you should choose a dog that the breed, first of all, look for a breed that's going to be right for you. If you have a really small, close space, don't get a border collie. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. a herding dog. Yeah. And if you're not prepared to, you know, exercise it for two, three hours a day, you know, and give it a job. And even just exercise is not enough for a border collie. You need to, they're one of the most intelligent dogs. You have to get them thinking just you can never drain a border collie with just physical exercise you need to drain them mentally Mentally. yeah so you know people think by getting a border collie because they are the smartest breed then they're easy to train because they're so smart like as if they could (laughs) they're so smart they can read the book themselves and and they can outsmart you that's (laughs) not true you know for you know the smarter the dog you know the more experience you need because you know a border collie thinks way too much you know they're they're thinking of every situation whether and then they're looking to you and checking in on your energy and that's how they decide whether a situation is okay or not um you know and and even just behavior traits like genetics a border collie is meant to herd that's what it will do you know and it's gonna you know chase after dogs and you know around it's not going to be a dog that you're going to take to the dog park they don't really enjoy you know scattering dogs because they can't you know bring them them all in in. yeah (laughs) you know and and just like a golden retriever you know what they're going to pick up your shoes and carry your shoes around it's going they're going to pick up you know they're they're that breed of dog you're not going to train that out of them so you have to look at what a you know, or a beagle. You know, if you want a very quiet dog, don't get a beagle. They are, they are meant to be very vocal. And same thing with a husky. Those dogs are meant to be very independent and, you know. And a beagle. Yeah. When they put their nose to the ground, Gone, if they're not yeah. on their leash, they go. That's right. Then they stop several hours later and go, go hmm, huh, this is interesting. Where am I? They have no <laughs> they idea have no where idea. they are. That's right. And they, they're just, they're yeah. wonderful dogs, but so you've got to be prepared to, for who they are. That's right. So really, you know, I always say you sort of think about what size a dog you want. Start there. What kind of extra, what kind of time do you have to spend with a dog? With training, do you want to do a dog sport? Are you a jogger? You know, are you just fair weather people? Because there's some people that, you know, only go out on nice, perfect temperature days with their dogs. You know, where some breeds of dogs, it doesn't matter if it's pouring rain or minus 25. You still have to take them out and give them exercise. So, you know, you know, it's possibly, I would say talk with, you know, find a trainer, start talking to a trainer, talk to your vet, you know, just somebody that you might know that's very knowledgeable in dogs to help you find a breed that's good for you. And if you want to rescue also, you know, talking to them, you know, getting advice, you know, and understanding. And then there's the dog that just happens to be yours. I'll never forget going to a pet store in Markham and everyone's looking at the little tiny teacup. Mm -hmm. And I saw this dog in the bottom cage and she was adorable. She was black and fuzzy and, 
I've never asked to see a dog at a pet store ever before because I, I have the weakest temperament ever. I'm going to love everything I see and I want to take them home. So I know well enough not to ask. Yeah. But I, I had mm. to ask to see her and I held her never and I in. loved her and I went out of the pet store, phoned my girlfriend who, Tannis, who's been on the show before and she runs the emergency clinic out in Durham and she used to be at Willowdale Animal Hospital. I phoned her and I said, Tannis, I think I found my dog. And she said, where is she? And I said, is that a pet store? I can't buy a dog from a pet store. She said, is she your dog? And I said, she's my dog. She said, then get her. Yeah. What's the downside? And it turns out it's Phoebe and Mm -hmm. she's, She's my dog. Yeah, oh, very good. <laughs> I met you her and I knew right she away. was my dog. Yep. So don't just you know you have to know your breeds and I mm-hmm. do know my breeds mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. knew that the two breeds that she had were very conducive with my lifestyle that mm-hmm. I could handle dog yep. of that size. You're a dog person, and that I would yeah. find the training for right. the dog if the you dog wasn't that. if I was having trouble. And that's yeah. what people don't that's understand. Right. Puppies are so much energy. Yeah. There's so much yeah. work. Don't be afraid to ask for help yeah. from a professional trainer. That's right. Not many people can get through it on their own, you know, and they really need that situation of group training, training with distraction, even though, you you know, you can figure this out. Training in a group is really beneficial as well. Like, that's why going to a training class is, is very, Well, it know, helps good. them socialize with other dogs, yeah, too, doesn't it? Right. And other people, yeah. I guess. And still learning to listen to their owner under this these great distractions of other dogs Mm -hmm. because some dogs do really great doing training in their living room and then as soon as you get them outside and there's (laughs) a dog walking on the other side of the street everything goes out the window so (laughs) you know now let's talk about that for a minute there are trainings that who cares if they ever actually learn to sit down and give you a paw Mm -hmm. but there are training that is life and death for a dog. Mm-hmm. And road training is one of those mm-hmm. situations. So how yeah. do you train them on the road? Um, it's, it's just socialization is, you know, just like that for whether it's for other dogs and also out on the road. You've got to get them out walking right away, you know, and let them, you know, be in the presence of the noise of cars. And, you know, I would say start small, start on quiet streets and then you got to start moving to main street where it's busier and maybe then hit main street when the train's coming in you've got to get them used to all these you know sounds um but you know using food rewards you know to keep them you know you know attentive to you and not be distracted by the squirrels and the birds and the cars and the other dogs and And things like that. We have Mm -hmm. a dog on our street, for example, um, who lunges at cars. Mm -hmm. He's now, he has to be the same age as my dog. He's got to be close to 13. And he's been doing doing this. What kind of dog is it? It's it's a lab, like a golden lab, not a golden retriever. Mm -hmm. And it's been that way since it was a puppy. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the owner try and restrain it on the leash, Mm -hmm. hold him down, offer him treats. And this dog will be on the leash with literally two inches of line. And it's jumping and the front paws are off the ground. Yeah. But this has been going on. And they've never done anything about it. For 13 years. They just go, that's him. And they, but there's a lot. But they're trying to hold him and they're trying to keep him back. But But holding them back, I would say it's kind of like trying to hold a man back in a bar fight. It just makes them want to go go more. at them more. You know, that's not how you go about it. Um, but it's it starts when it first happens. It's it's always your reaction to the first time something like that happens that decides whether this continues. But that's fun to a dog and typically that's really it typically it's a it's a border <laughs> usually it's a herding dog thing because it's moving, so they want to chase it. It's some kind of breed that chases shepherds, border collies, Australian shepherds, cattle dogs, things like that. But or it's also from dogs that don't get enough exercise and they've got pent up energy and they're releasing it in that way. Barking at a window is releasing energy. You know, chewing on baseboards is releasing energy. Oh my. Any of those problems usually is, you know, a tired dog, a drained dog doesn't chew baseboards. A, ch- a tired, drained, ex- exhausted dog doesn't chase cars because they're all chilled. It's like if you go to the gym, when you come back from the gym, you're just like, ah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're just relaxed. You have, you there's know, nothing I, left. There's no anger in you. There's no I've never frustration. Thought of it that way. And that's but the that's same thing true. with the dogs. You know, 
So when I take my dogs for a walk on the way there, one Molly, the dog from hell, Molly will lunge at cars, try mm-hmm. and pull on the way back. She ignores them completely. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there goes the energy's one. Like zone. she'll tense up when she hears it coming and it'll go by. And say, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And but when, as soon as you see the tense, said that. I never noticed that yeah. before. Yeah. If they're, if they've al- already, and even if we were to work on that, we would say, go exercise your dog somewhere else, you know, in the backyard, throwing the ball around for 20 minutes, train the energy. Now come out onto the street in front of that trigger. That car driving by is just like a squirrel. It's no different. A dog that goes after huh. squirrels, Interesting. you know, or barks at the door when somebody comes and charges at the door when the mailman goes by. It's the same thing. It's just releasing energy. I would say yeah. it's also the same thing as people biting their nails. That's stress, and they're releasing their stress by chewing on their nails. You know? Yeah. Take away the stress, they're not chewing on their nails, you know? Yes, then it, it does become a habit. Same thing with a dog. You know? Yeah, even I at 13, it, it's, it just becomes a habit. And right. It's, I've been having... Um, you were on the show, it must have been four years ago, mm-hmm. with Dr. Thompson. Oh, right. And we were talking mm-hmm. about conversations with a leash. Mm-hmm. Yes. And now when I see a car coming, if I, you know, walking two dogs at the same time is, is a lot of work mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'll see the car coming and anticipating what I might have with Molly, mm-hmm. I get them both to come in. Mm-hmm. I sit down. I've got the leash really tight with Molly. I'm not choking her to death mm-hmm. or anything, but I'm just saying to her, we're having a conversation and it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I calm my body language, mm-hmm, whereas mm-hmm. I used to freak out when she freaked out, then the yeah. two of us are freaked out. Yeah. Now I try and be really calm and I put her between my legs and she can feel my energy energy mm-hmm. from my legs mm-hmm. and she knows that it's okay yeah so that's she'll right. still go to make a work and i'll just put my hand somewhere where she can see it and say it's okay mm-hmm. it's okay and it, i get a whole different reaction from her right see so yeah. these shows are good because yeah, i right. learned something learning four something. years yeah. ago that i still use and it's to this such a day. good <laughs> way to be in all kinds of situations once you learn how to calm yourself in those situations you can use it everywhere you know when you're driving and you're frustrated with somebody you know out there just take a deep breath and you calm yourself. You know, when your yeah. kids are driving you crazy, just you learn to calm yourself. Even watching TV when there's a stressful thing on TV, I always find, you know, you can go, yeah. oh, and then you just go, oh. it's it's not real life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you just calm yourself. It's and It's good. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break now. We'll hear what's happening on the weather scene. You're listening to Fresh Waves. We've got Joanne George in the studio this morning, and we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned.